Sir, we are ready to go live. Yeah, we just go live. Let's have it. Yes, let's do that. Do we start? Yeah, live. We can go live. No. Friends from across the world who are joining this webinar today. This is the third webinar in the series of webinars that we have launched. And the basic theme is road safety challenges in India and preparation of an action plan on to how to sort them out, how to work collectively in all five on all five E's at the same time so that we can make a difference in containing this menace, which has gone on and on without any any relief any time, in spite of the world working across for last 10 years and the decade of action plan could not be achieved because the, there was no concerted effort in a well-planned manner. Number of NGOs have been working across the world, but there has been no collective effort of these NGOs. Number of agencies have been working in India, yet the number of accidents have increased and gone on increasing. So that is how this uh, thought came in our mind that we will do 12 webinars one after the other covering all the five E's that is the uh, engineering of roads, engineering of vehicles, the uh, education, enforcement and emergency care. So let's work on all the five E's, come out with what needs to be done in each case and how we can work to collectively on all these areas and show the difference. So while we are doing the webinars here. We are also doing to do improvement of six worst affected roads in India and to showcase within this year as to how much difference it has made to road accidents and fatalities in this area. It is with this background that this webinar series has been launched. And while we are doing that exercise for the six worst affected road, I am pleased to share with you that we are also working on a new expressway facility, which will become a case study for the world to look at, which will have everything what we are trying to do as correction on the existing roads. That will be one which will have all the, the entire thing in place. And I can assure you it will be a case study worth reporting and will be reported in the years to come. I'm contemplating to build the safest expressway in India, and that is going to be a facility in the state of Uttar Pradesh called Bundel Khand Expressway. So ladies and gentlemen, with this background, I have, uh, we have started working, and I'm sure with cooperation from all of you and with contribution from all of you in these webinar series, we will be able to achieve an excellent plan of action which will help to achieve our not only the world target of reducing road accidents and fatalities to 50% by 2030, but we'll try and achieve it in India by 2025. Gentlemen, I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar and in particular the speakers of the day. Ms. Melona, Director RSI from Athens, Professor Geetam Travari, Professor at IIT Delhi, Mr. Greg Smith, Global Program Director, IREP, and Dr. Pateria, Director, Anar IDA. I'm also pleased to introduce our moderate uh, to uh, welcome Dr. Ms. Susanna Zamatro, 
our Director General of IRF from Geneva. I would also like to welcome each one of you who has joined from different parts of the world for this webinar. The, the chief guest, uh, Mr. Sinha, is, is held up with the parliamentary committee and would be joining us soon. We will move, uh, uh, instead of giving his introduction now, I will do that later. I would now show you the, some short messages which we have received from the FIA president, Mr. Jane Tott, who is also the UN uh, Secretary General's a special envoy for road safety. Honorable Minister Nitin Gatkari, my dear Kiran Kapila, ladies and gentlemen, achieving safe mobility and transport systems is one of the most pressing social economic health and development challenges of our time. In countries where motorization is rapidly growing, like in India, some of the busiest roads are 20 times more dangerous than similar European ones. This is an enormous gap that we need to close urgently. There is added momentum for us to address this coach. We embark on a new United Nations Decade of Action for Road Safety, and we must all recommit to deliver on our 2030 targets. This aim to halve the number of road deaths and injuries, the SDG 3.6, and to provide access to safe, affordable, accessible, and sustainable transport system for all by 2030, SDG 11.2. And with the progress made in the last decade, and the tools we have gathered were equipped to make the difference. We have the UN Road Safety Conventions, a UN Road Safety Fund, global voluntary performance targets, and a global plan of action underway. I thank the International Road Federation for playing its significant part in this global effort. I commend your work in supporting stakeholders to improve roads, which ultimately benefit local communities, including children, who are, as we all know, among the most vulnerable. I wish you a productive webinar and look forward to a fruitful journey rewarded by life saves on the road. And you know, you can count on me. Thank you. Well, now we will have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the second message, which is from Bill Halkius, the current president, IRF Geneva. Honorable Minister of Road Transport and Highways and MSMEs, Mr. Nitin Kadgari, esteemed dignitaries, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the International Road Federation, a very warm welcome to all. I thank each and every one of you for joining us today in these very difficult and complicated times. The COVID-19 pandemic is having extensive ramifications to the entire planet. But apart from the COVID-19 pandemic, there is another pandemic that has been claiming lives and affecting healthcare, business and jobs for years, the road traffic accident pandemic. According to the World Health Organization, road traffic accidents were responsible for an estimated 1,350,000 deaths worldwide in 2016, out of which 150,000 or 11% in India alone. Neither death toll is acceptable. What is worse is that road traffic crashes are completely preventable, and there is a lot that can be done to ensure that they are reduced globally. No government, no citizen, none of us should have to compromise on the safety of his family. Our collective task should be to create a truly safe, sustainable, and efficient multimodal transportation system. To finally defeat the road traffic accident pandemic, we need to work in true partnership, public and private, industry and civil society, and we need to create the conditions to do so. Last but not least, we should not forget about our human capital. 
we must invest in capacity building. We can adequately respond to challenges only if we have skilled personnel. On behalf of the International Road Federation, I would like to invite each and every one of you to engage with the IRF to shape a better road and transport sector and a better future for all. I would like to praise and thank India, its government and its institutions for their bold initiatives in promoting road traffic safety. And I will say to the Honorable Minister, to the President of the India Chapter of IRF, Dr. Gangopatiya, and to my good friend, President Emeritus of IRF Geneva, Mr. Kiran Kapila, keep up the good work. And to all of you in India and elsewhere, please follow their example. We are all united for road safety because united we rise and united we deliver. Thank you all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a great pleasure in introducing the moderator of this program, Ms. Susanna Zamatro. She is the Director General of IRF Geneva uh, Program Center and is uh, responsible for developing and implementing strategic plans for the organization. IRF uh, was established in 1948. It's a member-based organization representing leading corporate and institutional players drawn from the road and mobility sectors worldwide. Our mission is to promote the development of safe roads and road networks that enable access and sustainable mobility for all. Named as one of the 40 most remarkable women in transport by Tumi, Susanna is an unstinting advocate for road safety. She is a member of the advisory board of FIA High Level Panel on Road Safety and has been serving since 2012 as the co chairperson of the Safer Roads and Mobility Pillar of United Nations Road Safety Collaboration Group, UNRSC. She has served in the steering committee of the Sustainable Mobility for All, an initiative led by the World Bank, and currently co leads the working group on data sharing. Over to you, Susanna. We can start the webinar now and perhaps after topic one, if the uh, secretary is able to join, we will have uh, his uh, address a little later. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kapila, and I hope you can all hear me well. Yes. Yes. OK, thank you and a very warm welcome to all of you also from the International Road Federation here in uh, Geneva. My name is Susanna Zamataro, Director General of the International Road Federation, and I have the great honor of being your moderator uh, today. And I'm accompanied uh, this afternoon by four wonderful uh, speakers, uh, by Mrs. Vasiliki Danelli Miloma, Milona, who will uh, talk about measures for vulnerable road users, including uh, school zone safety. We have Professor Gitam Tivari, uh, who will talk about accident black spot identification and mitigation. Then we will welcome Greg Smith, um, who will talk about development of standards for safe and forgiving roads. And last but not least, we will have Dr. Pateria uh, talking about special requirements for road safety in uh, rural roads. Um, let me remind you before I introduce in more details uh, our first uh, speaker, Mrs. Vasiliki Danelli Milona. Let me remind you some housekeeping rules. Um, we will go through all the four presentations. Each speaker will have uh, 20 minutes available to. Uh, uh, to present. We will leave uh, 15 minutes at the end uh, for some question and answers. So know that all of you uh, participating have been uh, muted by default, so you can interact with us, um, share uh, comments via the chat. But if you have questions, please use the question, question and answer function that you will see in your navigation bar and make sure um, if you are specifically addressing a question to one of the speakers, please um, say so right at the beginning and make sure your question is short so we'll have a bit of time to um, respond to several uh, of the uh, questions being put uh, forward. 
Now let me, uh, without further ado, let me um, let me introduce and make justice to the uh, extraordinary career of our first uh, speaker, Mrs. Vasil Vasiliki Danelli Milona. She's the president of the board of directors of Hellenic Research and Educational Institute uh, Panos <coughs> for the road safety and the prevention and reduction of traffic uh, accident. Um, Mrs. Uh, Vasiliki Milona. <laughs> She has uh, marked as a, a successful management career in the Greek telecom industry. The institute of which she is uh, today the president was created after the tragic and unfair loss of her 22 year old son Panos. And since then she has committed herself to raise awareness among citizens and organizations in order to strengthen traffic uh, safety culture in Greece and also uh, abroad. She has been honored uh, several times both in Greece, in Greece and in uh, Europe and I have the great uh, honor and pleasure to share with her and work with her hand in hand with her and other fantastic colleagues within the United Nations Road Safety Collaborations Group as well as in the framework of the FIA high level panel advisory uh, board which is uh, chaired um, and led by Mr. Jean Todt, the UN Special Envoy for Road Safety. Um, Vasilik, it's a great pleasure to see you again. I'll, um, I think you will be sharing your presentation, so let me remind you 20 minutes. Let's stick to the time so that we allow for some questions in the end. Vasilik, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susanna. Honorable Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to congratulate and thank you for organizing this uh, webinar. Uh, I believe it's a timely and a great opportunity to speak about uh, vulnerable road users. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, our Road Safety Institute, the problem, the global program problem uh, with road deaths the strategies for the vulnerable and the best practices from Greece, sharing our experience uh, and uh, providing you um, some of the practices that you could uh, probably, as Mr. as President Kapila mentioned, include uh, in your strategy plan. Uh, Susanna already mentioned uh, how the Institute uh, was uh, created after the tragic and fair loss of my son, so I will not say, say more about this. A world without road crashes is our vision. And our mission is to raise awareness for traffic safety culture and safe behavior of road users and also support the government and stakeholders to act for the prevention of traffic crashes. Vasiliki, when I'm seeing your slides, you should be sharing your slides, I think. You don't see my slides? No, I don't see them. Oh. Uh, so, shall we show you slides, Venom? Do you see my slides now? Yes. 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 Do you see it now? Yes. yes. So you see, okay, okay. Uh, so, I was speaking about um, the, the pillars we uh, our vision and mission, our vision, a world without road crashes, and our mission to raise awareness for society, but also to support the government and stakeholders to act for the prevention of uh, traffic crashes. Our strategy is based on uh, three pillars. The first is the general policy on road safety. We are an independent, uh, non-governmental organization, but we work closely with the government and stakeholders we do data analysis and evaluation of road safety measures. We do a lot on driver behavior, educational programs, information, advocacy, lots of campaigns. So to better protect the vulnerable and campaigning nationwide and not only. And we also deal with the infrastructure issues, implementing uh, implementation of international best practices, uh, the UN uh, instruments, UN conventions, EU directives and our team consists uh, of uh, uh, persons with technological background uh, with human sciences such as road safety experts, sociologists, psychologists and engineers. 
we design, have designed and implement programs for all ages, starting from the kindergarten till the elderly. And uh, we are uh, for different uh, target groups. We are, have training programs. We work uh, uh, closely with Ministry of Education, but also we do programs for the corporate business, um, high school, uh, primary school, high school, cycling, uh, and uh, all target groups. We could speak uh, for hours for each of these programs. I just mentioned these because some of uh, these programs could be of your specific interest and you could might you might ask for more. We also do a lot uh, for engaging citizens. We have thousands of volunteers who support us in these initiatives. We have um, uh, formulated the first blood bank for um, uh, road crisis victims. We do mostly prevention, but uh, we all know how important it is uh, to act upon uh, uh, serious uh, crash. Uh, we organize um, the National Road Safety Week, as we did last week. Uh, that's a yearly uh, event. The European Night Without Accidents for Don't Drink and Drive, the pit stop for road safety in the motorways, and even cleaning up um, road uh, signs. Uh, Suzanne already mentioned our work has been acknowledged by um, orga different organizations. Uh, we are a member of um, uh, FIA, uh, IRF member as well, uh, most uh, credible organizations and our work has been acknowledged uh, and uh, awarded by the European Parliament, the Swedish government and even more. Coming to the problem of global statistics, every 23 seconds someone dies on the road and uh, more than 50 million people are seriously injured with um, uh, ages 5 to 29 being mostly affected. More than 90% of road crashes are in low and mid middle income countries. Looking at uh, the data, we see that uh, more than half of all road traffic deaths are among uh, vulnerable road users, pedestrians, pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists. Coming to the global statistics, Africa has the highest proportion of pedestrian and cyclist mortalities. Also Southeast Asia and the Western Pacific, the majority of deaths are among riders of motorized two and three wheelers. More than 200,000 children and adolescents die on the world's roads every day. For every child who dies, another suffers a life-changing disability. More than 10 million youngsters, majority of victims hurt while walking, cycling or riding. In Greece, we have experienced during the last 10 years a considerable uh, decrease of uh, road deaths. 49% was the decrease of deaths and 63% the serious injured. And this was mostly due to the motorways that were built during the last years and also to the work that the Road Safety Institute has carried out. But we still have a long way to go because we cannot be satisfied when we still lose people on the road. The majority of the pedestrians losing their lives are people above 65 years old. Coming now to the strategies for the vulnerable. Uh, in Stockholm last February, and uh, President Todd referred to that, the vulnerable road users has, have been in the focus uh, for the new decade and the targets related, the SDG, Sustainable Development uh, uh, Goals, targets related to the vulnerable has been given attention. Strategies for the vulnerable have to be in priority since uh, uh, cycling and walking have to be integrating into transport policy. Establishing a walking and cycling culture and reducing pedestrian and cycling related injuries is very important and education and educational interventions should be also important to support the initiative. 
Coming to the speed vaccine, which is the, an, an important issue that the UN and uh, the FIA Foundation also supports, uh, is a very important issue since every child and adolescent can expect a, a safe and healthy journey to school. And every street, every urban street has, a, has to have a viable footpath and protect it at great crossings. Streets where children mix with traffic have a default speed limit of no more than 30 kilometers. And this is also the issue, the 30 kilometers issue, the issue of the campaign, the, and this year's the UN campaign. Every city has set an ambitious target for protected cycle lanes. Coming to the practices we have implemented, uh, especially in the school zone safety, uh, we have uh, uh, implemented uh, uh, measures uh, on infrastructure in collaboration with the local and regional authorities, signalizing zebra crossings and other intersections, and uh, installing and upgrading traffic signals. Uh, also, we have uh, done assessment around uh, schools for the identification of uh, risk hazards, uh, along with municipal and regional authorities, uh, even conducting um, research, introducing young students into research, and uh, also uh, applying recently methodology on star rating for schools. Uh, we have carried out lots of complementary awareness activities to sensitize drivers and the community on 30 kilometer zones. And you can see in, in the picture, young students along with the police in school zones to stop uh, drivers when they um, uh, exceed that, that speed limits. We have a, a large experience on this and you could give you ideas. We are at your disposal if you want to, to share uh, programs uh, about these uh, applications. Concerning infrastructure improvements, we have uh, dealt with signalizing intersection up, up, upgrade uh, in the Athens Center uh, to increase the visibility and thus the road safety. Uh, even an example at the Heraklion International Airport in Crete, we have uh, urged um, the authorities to develop the pedestrians crossings, which did not exist for many years, and we installed the roundabout that has significantly improved uh, mobility, safe mobility of uh, visitors. And also speed enforcement is an issue we have dealt with since, since the beginning. Uh, we have uh, developed um, the traffic, the best traffic policeman yearly award. This is uh, to encourage the traffic policeman and to raise the profile, the social profile of the traffic police, because sometimes citizens do not uh, feel very happy <laughs> when uh, they receive the fines. Uh, but uh, traffic policemen who are awarded by our institute are really very happy and they uh, receive some kind of training and some uh, journey for road safety training. But also we donate radars to their um, department, the police department that they, uh, they serve. We still advocate uh, for the vulnerable, even presenting in the parliament, uh, such as last week, for example, I also spoke on the far parliament. Very frequently we present our measures in the parliament. Last week, um, uh, the Committee on Production and Trade uh, brought, it, brought into discussion uh, with Ministry of um, Infrastructure and Transportation the new law on sustainable urban mobility and micro mobility. And we were really very happy that. Um, uh, our proposals were endorsed and included in the new legislation. I will mention this uh, program, Avenue for Traffic Safety. This is a program we started 10 years ago, uh, which uh, was um, uh, somehow awarded by the European Commission and is, uh, uh, dealt, uh, is considered as a best practice. And we still built on this uh, program. We were um, uh, coordinating uh, 13 organizations from nine European countries and we established the model for the national and the local road safety center and the mobile unit that travels everywhere. 
You could see here our centers and our mobile unit are equipped with technological equipment. All our trainings are science based evidence, but we do use equipment for experiential training and learning and we find it very successful. So we see you see the rollover car, the belt slides, the simulators and um, uh, tools for reflective materials, distraction activities, reaction tests, the alcohol goggles now we replace uh, with uh, VR also. Uh, goggles and um, we started in Europe, but we have done activities and uh, we have expanded activities uh, in areas such as uh, Jap Japan, uh, Hong Kong, uh, uh, last year with FIA in the United States, uh, previously in Canada, uh, in Iceland and many other countries. We have trained more than 230,000 pupils at school, at, in the schools. Our programs are accredited uh, by the uh, education, in, Educational Institute of the Ministry. And uh, through this, we are changing attitudes towards the safe minded behavior of young persons. Currently, we are coordinating um, uh, the Erasmus projects, Moving Stars, addressing young ages when they start at, with a kindergarten and primary school, and also cycling in safety. We are also coordinating uh, this uh, program. Uh, both programs scored very high in the evaluation and uh, for the protection of the vulnerable road users during the COVID-19, but the, during the and, uh, the post and in the post-COVID era. Last week was our um, uh, 14th Pan-Hellenic Road Safety Week. Uh, we conduct this uh, week um, yearly. We do this this period just before the Easter time. The schools are still open uh, with an exception of this year with the pandemic. So we have um, we are addressing uh, students, uh, citizens, but also politicians. Uh, every year we have a theme. This um, um, year uh, the subject was uh, these are our roads. This is the FIA and Child Health Initiative. Um, we have um, set uh, uh, as the subject and uh, we carried out discussions with politicians promoting the campaign. Uh, we have been engaging uh, mayors, governors, uh, the ministers and relevant stakeholders to pledge for the road safety of young people because we all have the right to walk our streets and neighbors in safety, to meet our friends, to travel to our education, to explore our communities. It is time to fight for our roads and as the East President Halkias uh, mentioned to saving lives, we have to do this. Uh, one uh, important initiative it's for the first uh, for the fourth year we're carrying out is a, a contest with the Ministry of Education in collaboration with the Department of Education, Radio, Television and Digital Media of the Ministry of Education. Uh, and um, we contact uh, um, uh, this contest among students for high school, for primary and high school. Uh, with subjects such as road safety, common responsibility, or road safety always and everywhere. It's amazing how inspiring children can be. We have even based campaigns on what we receive from the work of young children. This is a digital contest, so this introduces uh, young kids to uh, technology but also they bring, they discuss with the, the teachers and the parents all the road safety issues. If you are interested, we can indeed share with you and um, uh, you could see also uh, the works, uh, the, the outputs of these uh, uh, initiatives. Last but not least, just a few pictures from our latest campaigns about e-scooter safety. We know we all know how micro mobility has affected or is affecting our lives. Walking safely, which is always up to date. Videos for the children, uh, uh, also broadcasted by the national television and also the uh, parliament, uh, parliament's TV channel. 
children and adolescents uh, fatalities. The slow down, down campaign uh, we developed uh, with the support of FIL and the first ever flash mob for road safety that our road safety uh, institute has conducted uh, uh, with the support of the European Commission. Uh, this was from my side. I'm very thankful for uh, being able to communicate this experience with you and uh, we are very willing, very happy to share our experience and uh, together to work together for saving lives in India, Greece and the globe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vasiliki, for this comprehensive uh, presentation and thank you for sticking to the time allocated to you. <laughs> we now move on. Um, we, we move on to the next uh, speaker. Um, I would kindly invite Professor Gitam Tivari to get uh, to get ready and while she does so, I kindly invite you to use the question and answer function if you want to put forward questions to our uh, to our speakers. Uh, some of you have also been asking um, about the, the presentations. Make We will make sure to uh, provide you recordings and copies of the presentations of today. They will be displayed on the IRF uh, website and you will also be receiving um, a message when they are ready for you to um, to um, access. Um, let me now introduce Professor Gitam uh, Tivari. Uh, she's prof Chair Professor for Transportation Planning at the Department of Civil Engineering and IIT Delhi. Uh, she has been working in the area of traffic and transport uh, planning and, traf and traffic safety, focusing specifically on pedestrians, bicycles and bus uh, systems. She's the editor in chief of the International Journal of Injury Control and Safety Promotion since 2009, and she will be speaking uh, today about uh, accident black spot identification and mitigation methods and uh, countermeasures. Professor Tivari, are you with us? I don't see you on my screen. Can you please open up the video and microphone? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I so, think you will be moving your slides yourself. Yes, now I see you on the screen. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. And I kindly invite you to deliver your presentation and uh, you okay, will be sharing you. your slides. So I will uh, start sharing my screen. One moment and then you should be able to see the presentation in the right presentation mode. Fantastic. Yes. All right. Yes, good. So uh, thank you so much, Susanna. I, I'm extremely happy to be part of this very useful and important panel. And I would also like to thank IRF for giving me this opportunity to meet uh, IRF members worldwide who have joined this important webinar. So for today's topic, uh, I'm going to focus on black spot identification. And uh, let me begin with some uh, you know, some very fundamental theories which I'm sure most of you already know and if not know earlier, this is the third webinar. So you must have heard about these uh, principles that we are using to work on road safety. Uh, so uh, just a reminder, because what we do in black spot now uh, also has to be based on these approaches. So safe systems approach, as you know, is a major departure from our earlier thinking and earlier efforts. And this builds on the premise that deaths and serious injuries are not acceptable in road systems anymore. And no road user should be exposed to the level of, of kinetic energy that may result in death or serious injuries. Uh, you, uh, we also know that, you know, uh, this is also linked to very closely to the Vision Zero policy where we are targeting to have zero deaths on the road sometime in future. And uh, these characteristics basically go hand in hand and this becomes really, really important for the topic today, which is focusing on vulnerable road users. So we derive three key principles from this safe systems approach or vision zero policy and uh, black spot identification and uh, eventually the mitigation measures uh, will have to be built on these basic three principles. Uh, one, recognition of human frailty. A human body cannot withstand energies more than certain amount. Acceptance of human error. So no matter how much training 
and education is given to road users inside or outside the car. We are likely to make some mistakes, but for that mistakes, we have to create a forgiving environment uh, by creating uh, an environment where appropriate energy management is possible and the damage to the human being is the least. So therefore, the design of road plays an important role and that is why identification of black spots and mitigation strategies also become very important. So uh, let's focus on black spots. Uh, this is not a new term. Uh, this has been used by experts for many, at least I would say for three, four decades now. Uh, people who have been working on uh, reducing uh, road traffic crashes and deaths. But in India also for last few years, our government has been focusing on this identification of black spots and then uh, targeting specific measures to address the problems of black spots. Uh, even though it is known that only black spot treatment uh, is not the only thing which is going to have a major difference. However, this is a very good uh, starting point where our budgets can be targeted and areas can be prioritized where to do the investment. So keeping that in mind and keeping the context of Indian conditions, uh, some of the things have been updated. So uh, and what I'm going to quote uh, co at the moment in next two, three slides, I'm going to quote from the uh, latest code book that has been developed by Indian Roads Congress to help guide the practicing engineers. So black spot treatment program is targeting a treatment of individual sites, junctions or short stretches of about 500 meters of road in which road crashes are clustered uh, and we can actually have some kind of engineering interventions to address the problem. Route action scheme can also target to the whole length of roads, which has overall bad crash records. And then there are mass action schemes where standard treatments are applied to locations having incidences of common types of road crashes. An area action scheme is safety treatments uh, can be applied throughout an area having a bad overall road crash record. So these four types of uh, strategies are possible. Now to uh, create a simple definition which can help the practicing engineers, uh, the Indian Roads Congress has come out with this definition now. It's a road section of 300 to 500 meter length that has an abnormally high number of road crashes and it, a pattern of road crash types due to some underlying local risk factors. And uh, since uh, you know we are going to apply this definition throughout the country on different roads and we have national highways, state highways and other category of roads where the volumes are different, where the uh, frequency, crash frequency and fatalities are different. So the above classes of highways, which is both national highway and state highway and expressways, uh, we do uh, account for almost 55 to 60 percent of the overall crashes and deaths. So our focus for black spot identification is also going to be in these two uh, types of roads. And uniform guiding value cannot be applied because the volumes are different and the geometric characteristic, characteristic and terrain may be different throughout the country. So here is an easy guide which has been developed by Indian Roads Congress to guide the practicing engineers. Uh, so we find average annual total crash values. Uh, basically, we find three year fatality data from official sources. Road length data can be collected from official website of Ministry of Roads and Highways. An annual average total crashes collected over three period are divided uh, over the respective road lengths to get average annual traffic crash per kilometer. And then from this rate, we can find out what the uh, average annual traffic crash could be for 500 meter stretch. Now, uh, this could be multiplied by a suitable factor set a reaction level that means when we say abnormally high what is abnormally high it could be three times more than the average or it could be 15 times more than the average so now this is really left to the uh, local state level engineers depending on their budgets they can identify uh, locations uh, which have high crash rates and prioritize action there 
So setting reaction level is the reaction level for identifying for the black spots could be three or five times or 10 times or 15 times. And those road sections with crash clusters with secure more than 15 times average annual traffic crash can be termed as first order black spots. And similarly, we can find second and third order black spots, and these can be targeted based depending on the budgets we have. Black spots identification, and then of course there are other methods of identifying uh, black spots. Uh, this includes spatial analysis, cluster analysis, corridor analysis, etc. But the method just outlined in IRC is an easy method which can be followed by the practicing engineers. And of course, for each location, we can we do have uh, crash records from the police. So uh, to give higher priority to fatal crashes, we can develop a severity index. And this is the recommendation giving higher priority to fatal crash uh, spots uh, having 10 points and damage only crashes one point. So together it gives us prioritization. So this is an easy method of prioritization and identification. Now a detailed guidance is given in that manual uh, where a site engineer can after identification collect relevant data and prepare analysis which includes type of crash, severity of crash, type of victims, type of vehicles involved and type of injuries. And this would provide guidance to developing appropriate uh, um, mitigation measures. So given the time constraint today, I just would like to take you over a case study uh, where uh, such definitions can be applied and also uh, highlight some challenges that we face in the kind of black spots we are identifying in our situation in India. So I'm going to share with you a, some recent work that we have done in one of the districts. And this is uh, uh, in the state of Uttar Pradesh, where uh, a number of actually we started by uh, more than 1000 black spots were identified. But when we focused on one particular district, to understand the pattern, the area, the uh, black spot typology was uh, developed and the typology included area type. There are black spots in rural areas and urban areas. And then the black spots could be in a mid block section, which is away from any junction or intersection, uh, or it could be near at the intersection. Also, the black uh, area could be away from any habitat or settlement area or it could be near a settlement area. If it's a junction black spot, it could be four way junction, T junction, Y junction or staggered junction. And then we have a number of road typologies. So, so black spot could be on a national highway, state highway, major district road, other district road or village road. Why this typology is useful? Because it gives us uh, guidance to the kind of measures which would work. So the district uh, case study that I'm going to share with you is this uh, Sikapur district. This is only one district where uh, a number of black spots have been identified. So we have simply categorized how many black spots of each type are present here. So you see here the type 5 and uh, type 14. These are the two black spots which are uh, uh, highest in number. So uh, this starts giving us a clue that how we start designing our mitigation strategies. And it's uh, it's quite possible that each type is going to have similar strategy. So uh, if I summarize this uh, district black spots that we are working with. So this one has 8% are in urban area and the remaining 92% are in rural areas because this is primarily a rural district. And then when we look at junction type, we find that four way junction and staggered junction uh, have the maximum number of black spots and all the others, which is mid block uh, T intersection or Y intersection is much less. So here is a typical example of a mid block section, which is near settlement. And we uh, start collecti collecting some uh, simple data just based on Google images, as you can see here. You can see this densely 
populated area and the highways passing through that. And this is a state highway. It's a two lane divided highway. Uh, it is basically mid block type three, type three type of road. Uh, on one side, it has agricultural pattern. The, on the other side, it has residential and agricultural areas. And the last three crash records have been made available, available to us from the police. So we try and understand exactly what's happening here uh, by creating a small sketch of the local area. This is located in rural area. The land use along the section is predominantly agricultural. There is an informal bus stop and paratransit stop. There is also informal vending zone. There are small shops. Cattle are crossing the road because of land use and occupation of the area. Pedestrian activities seen throughout the section with very little infrastructure to support uh, the pedestrians. And here are some pictures. As you can see, the road quality in terms of pavement is excellent. Not uh, too bad. Uh, there are some painted zebra crossing and then all our observations have been that these painted zebra crossing actually does not help in creating safe places because the uh, speeds of vehicles do not get reduced here. So we other uh, observations on the major road is that uh, there is there are no speed coming measures on this highway. Zebra crossing is there, but it has damaged road steps. There is no pedestrian infrastructure and there is a school nearby. Uh, there is unauthorized median cut on the state highway and there is of course no lighting infrastructure at all because we do find a lot of crashes happening at night. And the hazardous situations we observe are risk to pedestrians and bicyclists due to fast moving vehicles. Road users are not able to see each other due to obstruction of side distances. Appearance of fast moving vehicles from the village road is resulting in conflicts with other vehicles. And of course, there is very poor lighting for nighttime visibility. Professor, so here are the recommendations. Professor, yes? Keeper, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, it seems like the slides are frozen. Can you please try to switch off your video? Maybe that will help the connection. Oh, OK, sure. We are left at the identification of black spots. Um, spots slide. Yeah, just one moment. I'll switch off the video. Maybe that would uh, improve the connection. Thank you very much. And maybe um, the technicians from our side can eventually get ready with your presentations. Maybe we can show it for you. Uh, I think the screen sharing would still work even if my video is off. Can you see my screen? Yes, try to turn your slides, please. Uh, OK. Yes, is, can you see it now? No, we can, Madam Githam, we can yes. see the screen, but uh, it is an old screen. You talked okay. uh, sometime a couple of Try minutes back. The, yeah, I'll just do it again. Yeah, one minute. Please. I know this happens with the teams. You have to reshare the screen. Yeah, maybe that's an option. Yeah. While you're doing that, I, yeah. I invite everyone. I think you should be able to see it now. Is it working now? Still frozen for me. Yes. Is it all right? No. Can you try reshare your screen, please? Yeah, please unshare and then share. I did that. OK, stop sharing. And then I'm going to share it again. No. And uh, is it visible now? It's trying to come. Let us see. Yeah, I think the network connectivity is poor today. Yes. Is it coming? Still not visible. Can Still I take not of, on um, the screen. Have the slides of Professor Tiwari. Can I suggest that we? Yeah, I, them that we, uh, I don't know whether they have my slides. No, we don't have but your only slides. The last three uh, slides were left because I was only taking you through the case studies now. I suggest you uh, keep speaking without these slides, and you have okay. covered so yeah. far. Well. So let's, right. let's continue, let's continue yeah, with it. I, 
Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, because you know what? Actually, I was just uh, sharing with you all the examples that we have been working and eventually I will highlight the challenges that we are facing. So uh, the recommendation in the recommendation on this uh, black spot, basically we followed that uh, you saw earlier and which was the recommendation. It is basically the speed vaccine. So on all such black spots, one most effective strategy is really to control speeds of vehicles by design. And as I showed you, just painted zebra crossing doesn't really help. So in the new uh, black spot manual also, the recommendation is that we use uh, bar markers as a warning message to the uh, driver that is followed by uh, some rumble strips and eventually uh, if it's a minor road, we should be able to create a, a circular hub that is most effective in uh, reducing speed. So it's a combination of marking and uh, rumble strips and appropriate location at appropriate location circular or flat top hump. That is what uh, is the recommendation in such rural areas because uh, traffic signals do not work here. Uh, the traffic is not that kind of heavy traffic that we can have traffic signals and even the nighttime visibility is very poor. So of course the recommendation is also sometime in future to create uh, make arrangements for improved lighting. And in the second uh, case, which I wanted to share quickly because I think um, I will be running out of time very soon, is a staggered junction with similar problems. So here we had seven fatal crashes in three years and uh, nine grievous injuries and seven minor injuries and similar problems. There is an informal bus stop. There are a lot of pedestrian activity and vending zone and small shops. The painted zebra crossing already exists there. Uh, in fact, there is a painted bar marking also. So the other thing we discovered that only painting bar markers, etc., is also not helping, uh, is not very effective in creating this uh, reducing uh, speeds to a safer level, which would be about 40 kilometers per hour in such locations. So uh, and again, minor roads also had no um, speed uh, reducing measures. And uh, this location, even though it's a staggered junction, is facing very similar problems. Pedestrians are facing conflicts from oncoming vehicles. Passengers or bus and paratransits face risk <coughs> when they get down uh, because uh, you know there is no uh, speed control measure here. There is risk to cyclists and pedestrians both due to fast moving vehicles. So on this so similar recommendations. <coughs> Susanna saying something. No, please, please go ahead and I think uh, you have two minutes to conclude. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect because this is my last slide really. So in this staggered junction also uh, again the speed vaccine that was me mentioned earlier has been recommended. Uh, so it's a combination of bar marking rumble strips uh, and circular hump, uh, circular humps on village roads, but on the main road uh, basically a combination and repeat uh, repeat application of bar marking and rumble strip uh, which has been uh, made uh, which has been recommended. So I end with this that we are at present the government of India is very serious about working on black spots. Every state is identifying and preparing uh, mitigation measures and uh, we do find that overall in India and including on these black spots, its majority victims are pedestrians and motorcycle users. So really the speed vaccine or the speed control by design because most of it happens to be in rural areas or small towns where uh, if we are able to control speed by design would be the most effective strategy. Uh, we, we also uh, find that a lot of black spots uh, have appeared where there is um, you know where an existing road has been upgraded and whenever we are upgrading a major district road to state highway or national highway these sections are creating new black spots. 
So clearly a lot of challenge lies while we upgrade a highway system uh, such that it should not lead to creating new black spots. So we need to work towards that. And I think a lot of for a lot of uh, mitigation strategies, even though the international principles would perfectly apply here, but we need to do a lot of documentation and study our own situation carefully to uh, come up with effective mitigation measures. So that's the challenge that lies ahead in front of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Tivari. I've seen in the question and answers in the meantime, plenty of questions piling up for you and also for Vasiliki. I see Mr. Capilla on the screen as well. I think the secretary is now ready to join us, Mr. Capilla. Yes, he is. So I'll pass the floor back to you. Will we? Yeah, might... I think we, we, we should have uh, we should uh, bring him in now and uh, move forward uh, with the with his address and then you can continue the, the prep program. Absolutely. So would you like to introduce our guest uh, speaker, Mr. Capilla? Uh, I would uh, introduce the secretary. Just uh, I think he is entering. He has entered already. You remove this from the screen. Just uh, yeah. I have great pleasure in welcoming you, uh, sir, uh, Mr. N. N. Sinha, the Secretary, Ministry of Rural Road Development, Government of India. Mr. Sinha has a very illustrious career. He is an Indian Administrative Service Officer of the 87 batch and took over this assignment on the 27th of May 2020. He holds a bachelor degree in electrical engineering from IIT Kanpur, a master in health sciences from John Hopkins University, Baltimore, USA. He has been prior to this assignment, Secretary, Border Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Chairman, National Highway Authority of India, Managing Director, National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation uh, at New Delhi. And before that, he has been he has held the position of additional Chief Secretary Rural Development with the government of Jharkhand, besides Secretary, Principal Secretary in departments of IT, road construction, industry, mines, among others. So he has extremely wide uh, range of portfolios which he has handled uh, exceedingly well and he is a well known administrator and above all an excellent human being. I have had the pleasure of working with him closely and I must say that he is one of the finest officers I have come across in my career. As Secretary of Rural Development, he is responsible for formulating, coordinating and implementing programs that address the development needs of the rural areas, focusing specially on mitigating and eradicating poverty and creating sustainable employment and livelihood opportunities. His programs rely heavily on use of technology for furthering sustainable development. His major interest in the, lies in the domain of sustainable development, use of ICT infrastructure, health and institutional building. Sir, we are indeed honored to have you with us today and I would request you now to kindly address the gathering uh, uh, which is waiting to hear from your good self. Thank you very much, Mr. Kapila. Good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Good afternoon, uh, Ms. Jaima Tairo, DZ IRF, IRF Geneva. Mr. K.K. Kapila, President Emeritus IRF G and all other presenters, uh, experts, participants. It's a privilege to be allowed this opportunity of addressing uh, this very important webinar on the safer roads for safety of all road users. I've been informed that this webinar looks particularly at the road safety in rural on the rural roads. It's important now uh, 
to pay special attention to the issue of uh, safety on the rural roads. I have some statistics <coughs> uh, which underlines the uh, importance of uh, uh, paying attention to this aspect. I, uh, in 2014, from the statistics brought out by ERW wing of uh, uh, Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, if you take uh, the road accidents uh, in, on the rural roads, uh, it, they constitute about 46 or 47 percent of the total accidents, and they uh, pro give uh, give rise to about 37 percent of fatalities. In 2019. The uh, pr proportion of accidents have come down if we take uh, rural roads. However, the uh, proportion of fatalities have gone up to about 39%. I was also looking at the uh, accident and uh, casualty data of India and the US. So there uh, the accident uh, uh, per lakh of population is about 36 per lakh in India, whereas in USA it's about 684 per lakh per 100,000. Whereas if you see in terms of the casualties, it's 11 per 100,000 in India, whereas in uh, US it's about 12 per 100,000. So despite a multifold uh, number of accidents. Uh, the casualties uh, in India are far more uh, as compared to the US. So we have to pay attention to the issue of road safety uh, because <clears throat> with the improvement in the quality of roads and uh, all uh, which includes the rural roads as well and with the uh, introduction of uh, good quality uh, vehicles, vehicles uh, which have uh, potential of accelerating uh, to very high speeds uh, and improvement in the quality of highways uh, everywhere. People are now prone to uh, eating at high level without having the requisite discipline and training and orientation to observe the rules of the road which is leading to high uh, uh, number of accidents and uh, including about uh, 150,000 fatalities every year and close to about uh, 900,000 injuries in road crashes, which is an unacceptable figure as it costs uh, the national GDP to the extent of about, about 4%. So if we are able to uh, reduce it, uh, uh, it does not add, but then it does not subtract uh, either. So in that sense, incrementally more resources are available for the economy for its productive functions than what it is now. India is witnessing exponential growth in road network, both high speed highways and low volume rural roads focused on rural uh, community connectivity. Vehicle ownership is growing and so are number of road crashes. We need to reassess the situation and deviate from the traditional thinking. A few practices which have reduced crashes in uh, many parts of the world are adopting a safe system approach and adopt deviating from the traditional approach of blaming drivers alone for the road crashes. Looking at the entire system holistically, investigating road crashes more thoroughly and scientifically, creating safer roads and safer vehicles, developing effective enforcement measures and strategies, improving awareness among all kinds of road users. These other strategies, uh, making the roads forgiving by design, realizing and un understanding that human body has limitations in absorbing impact stresses, also accepting that as human beings we are we are prone to making mistakes and we should design our roads in a manner in which it is able to forgive human mistakes 
we should also look at the life cycle cost of the roads uh, rather than construction cost alone providing generous amounts of road safety furniture like signs signals markings speed calming uh, devices and eliminating conflicts in the traffic movements capacity building of the road engineers is at the crux of building safer roads we in the ministry of rural development have taken many steps in a phased manner to encourage capacity building of the engineers who design construct and maintain our roads some of the measures are as mentioned in the year 2011 during pm gsy phase 1 a road safety manual was prepared taking excerpts from relevant indian road congress codes and with support of uh, add nirida several training sessions were organized for training the engineers in using the road safety manual during pm gsy 2 Uh, the uh, NIDA National Rural Infrastructure Development Agency, which is the apex body for overseeing the entire road construction efforts in the under the Prime Minister Gram Sadak Yojana, released a road safety audit handbook and encouraged road safety auditing. Created and offered two and six weeks certified road safety courses to our partner organizations like IATD. ERRI IAG and started road safety audits at different stages on the rural road funded under EMGSY 2 in the latest phase which is known as EMGSY 3 in line with the supreme court committee on road safety guidelines we have taken up DPR stage road safety auditing in a big way all rural roads more than 5 km in length are required to be audited at a design stage we have prepared a dpr preparation template to assist the consultants and states in preparing good quality dprs we have also created a road safety audit module on the omas uh, portal which is our monitoring uh, online monitoring and management portal where audit reports have to be entered by the states action taken on these reports is and uh, is monitored by the <coughs> nrid We have identified, trained, certified, and paneled up to about 800 road safety auditors, and we are continuously enhancing the pool of tools and personnel to monitor the quality and safety on the rural roads. We continue to support the states with resources, both financial and expert personnel, for conducting road safety-related capacity building efforts. in uh, some of the states uh, under an externally funded program uh, we took up road safety education program in schools and promotion of road safety activities through pamphlets uh, audio and video clips uh, and this effort can now be replicated uh, in other parts of the country as well realizing that rural road junctions are critical road elements with scope for accidents especially when rural road meet higher category roads uh, we have chosen uh, and collaborating with a nit prestigious nit to prepare junction drawing and junction drawing templates for different geometric and terrain conditions we have uh, also prepared draft rural road safety action plans for uh, uh, five states and this action plan identifies and enumerates various activities and tasks under each activity the road stakeholders who are responsible methods for monitoring achievement of each task timeline and budget for each task other states are also being encouraged to prepare such action plan and implement uh we uh, are also uh, ensuring that the roads are kept in uh, good maintenance and good condition and uh, each one of our uh, contracts uh, not only has a defect liability period of 5 years but uh, uh, the pmgsy 3 phase uh, we are also uh, requiring that Uh, at the end of the five years, they undertake a renewal and also provide for budgets uh, uh, for maintaining uh, the roads uh, for a rather period of five years. So, uh, in total, uh, the state governments are being encouraged to provide uh, funds for the maintenance uh, 
although uh, state governments find it difficult to arrange for maintenance resources but uh, this persistent effort for uh, 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 encouraging the states to uh, provide uh, funds for maintenance and the regular monitoring has uh, borne fruit and um, we have seen in the recent past that many states have uh, come forward to uh, volunteer funds for the uh, uh, maintenance of the uh, roads which have been undertaken by them. Uh, so uh, in all uh, the uh, rural, uh, our ministry uh, is uh, doing whatever it can uh, to uh, ensure that the uh, roads under its charge uh, are constructed and maintained well. Uh, we are coordinating our efforts with the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, which is the uh, apex agency of the Government of India for all matters connected to the uh, uh, safety of the um, uh, road safety, uh, including uh, construction and maintenance of their highways, the vehicle uh, design, uh, the uh, enforcement as well as the uh, emergency uh, measures so uh, we, we we are uh, uh, quite uh, hopeful that uh, with the measures uh, that we have undertaken and with the support uh, uh, and the framework which had is being provided by the ministry of road transport and highways uh, we will be able to uh, uh, ensure that uh, the not only the accidents are reduced but the uh, human loss and human uh, tragedy that follows these accidents are brought down significantly and the loss to the economy on account of uh, the fatalities and the morbidities are brought down and uh, uh, we, we are able to provide a much better experience to the road users. Uh, thank you again for uh, giving me this opportunity of addressing this very important gathering and I'm quite hopeful that uh, the deliberations uh, in this important webinar will uh, be able to throw up uh, many suggestions uh, and um, uh, findings uh, which would uh, of course enrich the, uh, uh, the rural road uh, construction and maintenance uh, efforts and the entire uh, road user experience uh, uh, indeed in the rural areas and thereby uh, uh, enhance the quality of uh, road use and the safety of road users. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sinasa, for that illuminating address. Uh, we fully share your concern of the loss to the nation of GDP 4% and uh, the problems that accompany the, uh, the, uh, the fatalities which are fairly high on the rural roads, as you said, 39%, which is a very high number. Uh, we are doing a comprehensive work now, working on all the five E's, and we are hopeful that once we do this uh, comprehensive uh, national plan comes out on the national actual plan on road safety, it will be uh, very beneficial and the nation will be able to handle this problem in a very coordinated and uh, right manner, which we have lacked in the past. And this should give relief to the uh, nation in terms of reduction in road fertilities and road accidents. Thank you very much once again, sir. Thank you. Susanna. The yes, floor yours. thank you, Mr. Kapila. I hope you can all hear me well. And thank you very much to our guest uh, speaker, uh, Chief um, Guest of Honor. 
I'd like to now uh, pass the floor to Greg Smith from uh, the IRAP, the International Road Assessment Program. I see we're running a little bit late now, and I'll kindly ask Greg to help us keep uh, track within, uh, within the time. Uh, Greg Smith uh, leads the Global Program Division of uh, IRAP, a charity dedicated to preventing serious road crashes, which are the leading cause of death for young people worldwide. Mr. Smith works closely with governments, multilateral development banks, non-governmental organizations and industry on road infrastructure safety policy and projects globally, including in the Asia Pacific, European, African, Middle Eastern and Latin, Latin American regions and I have the great pleasure of working with Greg on a number of, of projects. Greg, I hope um, your connection is fine. I see your slides. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Susanna, and uh, thank you everyone. Secretary Singer, uh, Mr Capilla, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the chance to speak with you here today. It's a fantastic opportunity um, for us to take part in the, the development of your Road Safety Action Plan. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, about developing road safety standards uh, as best I can today. Um, I do know that my colleague Rob is going to be speaking more in more detail about IRAP in a later webinar, so I won't go too much into detail about IRAP, just a little um, touch here and there. So just to introduce you to IRAP, we're a charity. Uh, our vision is quite simple. It's to help create a world free of high risk roads. What we've done is create a global standard for performing safety assessments. Last year alone, we provided training to about 6,300 people in training events, training and events, and more than 200 accreditations have now been uh, awarded. And I should say about a third of those accreditations are in India, um, which is very exciting. Um, the program and the tools and the methodology that we've developed is used by, has been used by more than 100 countries to assess more than 2.5 million kilometers of roads around the world. So these tools have been well tried and, and well um, tested all around the world. The programs that we've worked with and uh, have been in much very often involving investment in roads. And in fact, the IRAP assessments have helped to shape and influence more than $80 billion of road infrastructure investment uh, around the world. We're a small team, but we have a wide reach, uh, and that's very much because we have the opportunity to work hand in hand with partners all around the world. Um, it includes our program donors, particularly the FIA Foundation and the Global Road Safety Facility and FedEx. Uh, but we also, of course, work very closely, as Susanna said, with IRF, um, not just globally, but in, in countries as well. Uh, and of course, there in India, we have uh, the India RAP program. Um, which uh, if you're not feeling really familiar about, I'll share an address for that in a moment. Professor Tiwari touched on this, or didn't touch on this, actually explained this very well, better than perhaps I can. Um, so I'll just, I'll just briefly uh, mention it, that our philosophy to road safety at IRAP is very much aligned with the safe system approach um, to thinking. So when we are thinking about how to develop road safety uh, standards and assess roads, we're very much thinking about the principles that, number one, human beings, we make mistakes. It doesn't matter if uh, you're Indian or Swiss or from the US or Australia, we all from time to time make mistakes. And like Professor Tiwari said, it doesn't matter how much training you do, you still can make mistakes. Uh, and like we heard in earlier presentations, children also, we know, make mistakes. Almost by definition, that's what makes them children. And so the road environment is very dangerous for people, uh, for everybody, but also for, for children, unless that recognition that people make mistakes is uh, built into the system. We also know that people are very fragile. To give you a very simple thought experiment, imagine if right now I asked you to climb up onto your table, onto your desk, stand on your desk, and jump off onto your feet. Maybe some of you would probably do it. Most of you would do it. Some of you may not. If I then said jump off that table head first, so do a dive off that table, no one would do that. It's crazy because we're so vulnerable, we're so fragile that we know if we jump off even just the table onto our head, we're going to be seriously injured. Yet the energies that we experience on the road network are actually much higher than that energy if you're jumping off a table. But put those two things together, that we make mistakes and that we're very fragile, 
it's just not surprising that so many people are still killed and seriously injured on our roads. We know that safe road design combined with safe speeds, speeds that are within the tolerable thresholds for human beings, that's how we can save lives. And that really needs to be an underpinning principle in all our design standards that we develop. I did mention India Wrap just a moment ago, and the tools that are available through India Wrap and the training uh, enable a real, a real uh, suite of um, approaches for systemic safety management across entire road networks, not just individual locations. Um, the tools have been developed uh, internationally with the best evidence that's available and very much thinking about the safe system approach. Um, I really encourage you to take a look at indiarap.org. You can find out a lot more about what's happening there and the tools and the systems that are available um, for, for everyone to use. In the global context, and if we're thinking about design standards, um, there's probably two key things that I want to really highlight. Number one is that we're entering the second decade of action for road safety. So the first decade ran from 2011 through to 2020. And just recently last year, the UN General Assembly um, adopted the second decade of action for road safety, which will run from 2021 to 2030. That was uh, the result of a recommendation that came from um, a ministerial conference that was held in Sweden earlier in the year. The target for the decade of action, the second decade of action, is a halving of road deaths worldwide by 2030. So a halving of road deaths. It's a large, large uh, ambitious target, but absolutely one that can be achieved. And we've already seen numerous, several projects uh, quite large projects in India where very significant reductions of deaths have occurred. Um, the challenge is to how, how to make those excellent case studies turn into something really systemic and that can be applied across the entire uh, national or network of roads. Underpinning that is 12 targets that have been um, uh, put forward by the UN through the WHO. These are voluntary uh, targets. And there's two in particular that relate to road infrastructure specifically, that's target number three and target number four. Um, the links to these are down the bottom of the screen in that blue hyperlink there, so later you'll be able to follow that and check these out if you're not familiar with them. Target number three relates specifically to design, to new roads uh, and to design standards. It says by 2030, the goal is that all new roads achieve technical standards for all road users that take into account for its safety, or they meet a three star rating or better. Uh, so it's ensuring that all road users are properly reflected uh, in terms of their safety needs in design standards, uh, and or all the roads are achieving at least a three star rating. So I'm gonna focus a little bit among that, and that's gonna be the context. When we look at what the assessments that have been done around the world tell us, what they really show is that there is a significant lack in, in infrastructure safety that's built into our networks at the moment. And that suggests that the design standards that have been used in the past are not adequate uh, for, for safety needs. The data that you're looking on the screen here is it's a little grim. Uh, it's based on a sample of 358,000 kilometres of roads across uh, more than 50 countries around the world. And what it really tells us is, I think on the positive side, it, there's a huge opportunity through road infrastructure design uh, and good construction to make a huge difference in road safety. Uh, and I think combined with speed management, I suspect that's where the biggest impact in road safety is going to come from. So a couple of the statistics are 85% of the roads of this 358,000 kilometres of roads, 85% where people walk, have no formal sidewalks and traffic flows at more than 40 kilometres an hour. So that essentially means that people need to walk on, on the road and the traffic is travelling fast enough that if there's an impact with them, there's very high chance of death or serious injury. When you think about that statistic alone across the world's roads, it's not surprising then that pedestrians make up such a large percentage of road deaths around the world, simply because the infrastructure hasn't yet been provided for them. Similarly, 81% of un uh, undivided roads are undivided and have traffic speeds of 80 kilometers an hour. So most of the roads in that sample are undivided and hit traffic at 80 kilometers an hour. 
we know that if a head-on crash happens at that speed, where there's an impact speed at 80 kilometers an hour, the safest car in the world won't prevent you from death or serious injury. Even the best car that you could buy from Europe or Sweden won't prevent you from being seriously injured or killed at a crash at that speed. So we know that that has risk of death or serious injury built in. On the right-hand side, you can see some of the charts about the percentages of roads by the star ratings. And remember, the target is that new roads achieve the three-star rating or better. The best performing category is for vehicles. So about 42% um, of roads are three stars for vehicles, a bit more than 9% four-star, and about 4% is five-star. So more than half of the roads are three stars or better for vehicles. But the story is much different when you could talk about pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorcyclists. And so what we really see is that historically, the design standards have very much focused on uh, accessibility for vehicles, but often at the expense of pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorcyclists. And this is hard data that really bears out um, that case and also very much explains why the numbers of deaths for vulnerable road users around the world um, tend to be so high. If we just for a moment zoom in uh, on India in particular, um, colleagues in, in, uh, there in India have spent some time to be assessing national highways uh, and we've very been very fortunate to have projects um, with the National Highways and Authority of India. Um, but they've also had the chance to star rate some of the IRC design standards. So what you're looking at here is some of the results of that sort of analysis. Uh, this is a six lane, uh, national highway um, and the IRC guide is the, the manual for the six lane highway which is really amalgam of a series of specifications all into one manual. The photo on the left shows that fundamentally those six lane um, highways are really three stars for both motorcyclists and, and, and vehicle occupants. Uh, so on a typical mid-block straight section you're going to see that getting to three stars, and that's with operating speeds of 90 kilometers an hour. On the bottom photo though, what you do see is when you get to the built up areas, it's very easy to see that the star rating for the vulnerable, the more vulnerable road users, the, the pedestrians and bicyclists, can be quite low. So in that photo there at the moment, there are people crossing the road, but not a clear pedestrian crossing facility, nor any sidewalks. And so there is a, a gap um, that's, that's still still apparent, in, particularly to, in terms of the vulnerable road users. On the right-hand side, uh, you see a chart that looks at the risk scores uh, for that type of cross-section, that type of six-lane cross-section, uh, at different speeds. So on the vertical of the chart, you can see what we call the risk scores. So the higher the score, the higher the level of risk. On the horizontal of that chart, you can see different operating speeds. So starting at 30 kilometers an hour and running right up to 120 kilometers an hour. The bars represent the total risk and each of the colors are related to the different crash types. So black is run off road, head crash. Pink is head on. Blue is intersection and yellow is property access. What you can see is, and this is for vehicle occupants, just focusing on them at the moment is that the, a critical point happens really at the 90 kilometer hour threshold. Prior to that, you can see that the risk increases as vehicle speed increases, but you're staying within what we would call the three star category. Once you get to 90 kilometers an hour, that's when the situation really starts to change. That's when you start to get a tipping point up into the higher levels of risk, and that's getting into the two star category. Thereafter, once you get to 100, 110, 120, the risk really, really rapidly accelerates and gets very much higher. And so ensuring for the speeds that are in that 80 to 90 range and no higher is a, a, almost a, a very sure way to help ensure that the risk on the national highways doesn't get um, into that rapidly increasing um, levels of risk. So that analysis is possible for all the different road user types, but it really, really um, I guess helps to in, uh, explain or demonstrate the close relationship between speeds and the design of the road. One thing I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about is the UN SCAP um, Asian Highway Design Standard for Road Safety. This is a standard that maybe not many people are aware of, um, but it was developed a few years ago. Maybe uh, it, was, it came into force in 2018. 
and gives a, a quite detailed explanation about what would be needed for um, the, the designs for the, nat the Asian highway network to achieve the three star target that's been set. So you can find this uh, information about the Asian highway network, the general standards and then the safety specific standards at the website address that's at the top of the screen there. So for those who are not familiar with the Asian design, highway design standards, the Asian highway network covers 145,000 kilometers of roads across 32 countries. So this design standard, I'm, I go on a limb, out on a limb and say it's possibly the most expansive design standard in the world. Uh, uh, some people might challenge me on that, but this, it's, a, it's a standard that covers an enormous length of roads. In the photo on the right hand side, you can see the roads that are part in India that are part of the Asian Highway ne Network, basically the major national highways. Um, there's a working group on the Asian Highway Network that meets biennially, so every two years. Um, and this standard, it's really, like I said, designed to support the achievement of targets three and four. It's really there to help countries see what they could do to make sure that they achieve those targets. The standard covers primary roads or what might be called expressway roads, so access controlled, plus class one, two, and three roads. It came into force in 2018. It's really focused on the Asian highway network, but really it also can be used as a reference guide for all highways, all rural highways, because um, it's got some really valuable information in there. So it's really structured uh, around this key table that's very detailed. Uh, and I'm not going to go through all the detail in it, but I'm going to pick out a few interesting ones that might be worth uh, considering in greater depth in the Indian context. And perhaps um, if the IRC standards don't already reflect them, perhaps that's an avenue um, for further um, consideration. So down the left hand side, you can see the topics, the road infrastructure, roadside safety, intersections, pedestrians and slow moving vehicles, the traffic calming and delineation. Across the top, you can see the four different road classes and for each one of them, the design speeds. So typically those design speeds relate to level terrain, um, uh, sloping terrain, steep terrain and mountainous terrain. Um, but they can also, as I'll show, be used um, in terms of the urban and rural areas. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of ones out of this. And like I said, this is available on the UNSCAP website right now. So one of the key things that comes out in the design standard is the strong recommendation that the default speed limit through densely populated built up areas should not exceed 50 kilometers an hour. And there's some there's a little image there about how you might implement that, particularly with a, a stage speed reduction as you come into the villages or towns and traffic calming. So that's a very strong recommendation that comes through in the standard is to ensure that traffic speeds in those built up areas are very low. So even if it is a national highway running through a village, speed management through those, those areas is critically important. Uh, it also, for example, for the primary and class one roads, um, talks about the need for median segregation. And you can see in India that is very common and, and, and becoming increasingly common as the road network is upgraded. So this is a photo um, from the Indian network that shows a safety barrier in the middle of the road. Extremely effective in reducing head-on uh, road crash deaths. It's like a vaccination for that type of crash. What the standard also talks about though is for class two roads, so these are undivided roads, is the recommendation that for anywhere that's got a speed limit of 80 kilometers an hour, a wide center line treatment is put in place. So like in those photos, something that separates the opposing traffic lanes a little more than just a regular white line, just gives it a little bit extra space. The research has shown that that treatment combined with the edge line rumble strips, which I'll talk about uh, in a moment, can be really, really effective in reducing um, head on crash risk. It has a, an effect of physically separating the traffic just a little bit, but also I think there's some sort of psychological impact of that um, narrowing of the traffic lanes and separating of the traffic lanes as well. The standard does um, take some, quite a bit of time talking about uh, operating in hilly environments, uh, and particularly it focuses a lot on the long steep grade um, issues. This is areas where particularly heavy vehicles, trucks, um, commonly have severe problems with their, particularly with their braking and losing control. So it talks quite a bit about uh, that situation. Uh, it talks about the need for developing a self-explaining road alignment, 
avoiding critical curves that an out-of-control vehicle can't negotiate. Um, it talks about short sections of gentle gradients between steep sections of, of um, divided road on divided roads to avoid that situation where a vehicle might get to that short section, feel comfortable and speed up again, and then go back down a steep section uh, and so forth. So there's quite a deep bit of detail there. And also the design standard also includes uh, reference to the arrest events uh, and good practice about how to develop those. Uh, it also talks about the need for climbing lanes and overtaking lanes, particularly in the hilly areas. Um, these are really, really valuable where you have heavy traffic and heavy vehicle traffic that will move slower than the rest of the traffic and therefore result in overtaking manoeuvres. Um, so the ability to put in an extra lane for slow moving vehicles so that the faster moving vehicles can safely pass them um, is something that can have a really significant um, impact in, the, in those hilly environments. Uh, so the design standard does deal with those as well. One minute. Uh, one minute. Okay, uh, it talks about shoulder rumble strips, um, which are highly effective and I think could have a very good impact um, if uh, applied systematically across the network in India uh, and also motorcycle lanes as well. I'm going to come back to these motorcycle lanes in just a moment. Um, one document I want to talk about briefly and let you know about is that, uh, one that we published with the NACTO um, team very recently where we star rated a whole series of design options for built up areas. Uh, on the left of the screen, you can see an example of a typical built up area that hasn't yet been treated for road safety and the star ratings that you get are the one and two stars. And then how you could achieve the five star ratings with good design and speed management. That's available for free on our website um, at that address. It's very, very valuable in terms of thinking about how you can create safe urban environments. Motorcycle lanes is one that I also encourage India um, to really consider. Uh, as far as I know, IRC um, guides don't yet cover motorcycle lanes specifically. Um, the one country that has developed motorcycle lanes very well and has documented that well is Malaysia. Uh, so I would suggest that that's a really good place to start. The reason I say that, and this is perhaps a, a topic that gets glossed over a little bit, is that in fact riders of motorcycles, two-wheelers and three-wheelers in India, are the single largest group of people killed on the roads. They are in fact the most vulnerable uh, road users ahead of pedestrians and, and cyclists and vehicle occupants. Um, so understanding how we can develop uh, a network that's truly safe for motorcyclists across the Indian network I think is really valuable and I think friends in Malaysia may have something really really helpful to share there. Um, I'm just going to skip one last um, slide, Suzanne, if you'll, you'll indulge me a little. Um, one thing I want to point out is uh, the, the idea that um, concession roads, so roads built with tolls, uh, can actually be a very quick way to develop very safe road networks. To give you an example, in Brazil we're working with uh, the government and the IFC, the International Finance Corporation of the World Bank, on the PIPA network. Um, that's a network that's 100, oh, sorry, 1,273 kilometres long, and they're about to award a 30-year concession uh, for those 12 highways. There's going to be about $2.5 billion of investment uh, come into those roads um, to get them up to scratch. And what the government and the IFC has done is said, we will set a star rating target for those concession roads. And so we, we might say, I'm just going to... Uh, for instance, say that half the road has to at least get to three stars. What they then say is if you achieve that three star rating or get better, you have a financial incentive. The concessionaire actually gets a higher payment as a result of that um, achievement. So they can achieve something a little higher. Um, so it, you build in an incentive for uh, measuring the safety systematically and improving the safety on that network. That's something that uh, Mr. Kapila mentioned, the uh, expressway in uh, Uttar Pradesh. Um, perhaps if that's going to be a concession network, that's an approach that could really be considered. Um, also, I just wanted to touch on the fact that uh, in China, where we've worked very extensively, there's been very large uptake of road safety assessments across the country and very successful series of road investments in terms of improving the network. One of the key things that they did there uh, is that the China Rap team, which is actually part of the Ministry of Highways, um, the China Rap team developed a guide that 
was an official procedure for producing local application or for local application of RAP assessments. So it said in, in China, this is exactly how we will do the RAP assessments, very systematically and consistently right across the country. But it also included very practical examples of safety treatments that can be used across the network as part of that safety program. So it meant that they were able to put this guide together quite quickly without having um, to take the more timely approach of improving the design standard and give the designers and the engineers practical advice and practical clearance to try some of the safety uh, features that are used around the world, but not yet reflected in the, in the design standard. So this guide became, uh, I guess, a really important stepping stone for scaling up the safety assessments and also scaling up the safety treatments. It really gave the engineers confidence that they could implement raised pedestrian crossings, roundabouts, um, new ways of doing uh, sidewalk design without being in trouble that they might not have matched the, the international, I sorry, the design standards themselves. Um, so that's another area that perhaps um, IRC would, would consider um, as part of this next decade of action for road safety. Um, so I will end it there. Um, Susanna, I just want to say thank you very much for the chance to, to speak here. And like I said at the start, um, there are so many fantastic examples of roads being improved in India. Um, some of the demonstration corridors, like the one on the screen, are ones that I refer to all the time and encourage countries to, to take a look at and adopt. Um, so there's, there's such enormous potential here um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. And I hope and I, I, hope I, I, hear, I hear some. Can I ask can I the ask ask question to fix that? To fix that? I'm sorry to play, sorry the, to play the ready running uh, 16 minutes behind the schedule. Thank you so much, Greg. And I see quite a number of questions piling, uh, piling up. While we get the next uh, speaker ready, um, let me remind uh, to everyone that do not worry, we'll be sharing um, presentations uh, that you've seen today in the recordings of this webinar with all of you. They will be uploaded on the IRF um, a website and you'll be notified when the presentations and the recordings will be uh, available. Um, I'd like now to pass to the floor to the next uh, speaker. The next speaker is Dr. Indresh Kumar Pateria. Uh, he's a professor in civil engineering and government at Government College of Engineering, Aurangabad, Maharashtra. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Um, he's presently working as director of projects in the National Rural Infrastructure Development Agency, Ministry of Rural Development, implementing Pradhan Mantri Graham Sadak Johanya. And um, uh, in, uh, in his capacity of director of projects, he's looking after ADB assisted uh, projects, research and development training and capacity building and quality assurance uh, system. He has contributed significantly, significantly in development of many guidelines through Indian Road Congress specifications uh, specifically for uh, rural roads. Dr. Um, Pateria will be talking about special requirements for uh, road safety in rural uh, roads. I hope you are with us. I think you will be sharing your slides or talking freely. Yes, you are on. We can see you, Dr. Pateria. We can see your slides as well. But we can't hear you. Dr. Patrick. Can you hear me now? Yes, absolutely. Yes. You need Good evening. To, good evening. You need to put your slides on uh, slide mode. On slideshow mode at the bottom of bottom right of your screen.
Yeah, now it's okay. He's got it now. Oh. Is it okay now? It is still yeah. not presentation mode. Okay. Yes. Is it fine? You will have. I think it takes a little bit of time before it comes up. We're still not seeing. We we see this slide growth in road length by category. Actually, in Microsoft Teams, it has to be put in full screen first before sharing. So stop sharing your screen and then try again, please. Do we have the slides? Otherwise, we can move them from um, centrally from from IRF India. Uh, I'll just check it once again. OK, please try that. I have already put it in. Put, put it in presentation mode and then share. While we're getting ready again, I'd like to repeat the message that uh, the the slides, uh, the presentations you're seeing today and the recordings will be shared with all the participants. Do not worry. I've seen many requests and, and comments for that. We will be getting uh, back to you on this. Um, I see also we are running a little bit behind schedule and and so I'm not sure we'll be able to have enough time for questions, but we'll make sure we get back to you. Dr. Bra, are you are you ready now? Can I please suggest with the slides from uh, Sentry from IRF India? Is it OK now? No, we're still seeing um, the middle of the, present, the overview. It's not in presentation mode, so we will do it from here. OK. Just a minute. Thank you. In that case, Dr. Pateria can unshare so that control can be given to IRF India chapter. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. We're all set. The floor is yours, sir. OK. Next, please. Uh, I will be taking you through the road network of the country just to emphasize the overall uh, length of the road network rural road network because the, the, the topic given to me is about the rural roads. So you can see on the chart over here, almost 4.1 million kilometers are the rural roads out of total 5.8 million kilometers road network of the country. And to that, if we add project roads of the order of 0.32 uh, million kilometers, it, it takes a major share more than 70%. Next. This is just to emphasize the <coughs> growth of rural road network in the country. It has grown up tremendously from 50-51 till 2016-17, the official figures of the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. Next. This is uh, the scheme in which I am working as director uh, projects. Uh, this is just to, to bring out as to what is Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana. In fact, I just emphasize that there is more than 4.2 million kilometers of uh, road length of rural roads in the country. However, this Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, Prime Minister's Rural Roads Scheme, which was started in the year 2000, is working only on a part of it. So we, <coughs> we are working right now under these four different schemes of government of India, four subsets of government of India. Next. The, these are the salient features of the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, this decentralized uh, planning, 
100% funding from government of India, dedicated mechanism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll not focus much on this. Next, please. These are the achievements of this scheme till now. We have already <coughs> crossed around six uh, six sixty one thousand kilometers of rural roads constructed under PMGSY till now from two thousand. So it is a huge network. And uh, beyond this, the rural roads are being constructed by different state governments. Even in PMGSY, the roads are being constructed by the state governments. But here we have <coughs> the engineered uh, roads being constructed very systematically. I will be taking you through the process of sanction as well as uh, the, the safety issues being looked into. Next. These are the fatalities as have been already discussed in by the earlier speakers. I just wanted to make a small uh, correction over here that the number of fatalities in urban versus rural areas are being reported by the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, but they are being many times <coughs> being considered as on rural roads. So these are not the fatalities on rural roads, but these are the fatalities in rural areas, maybe on national highways or state highways. So this is just a small clarification that the accident, the, the actual fatalities on rural roads are bare minimum. However, as they are in rural areas, they are being produced, they, they are being pictured over here in, a, in large numbers. Next. Uh, there are... <coughs> specific requirements of rural roads for road safety. In most of the rural roads, the land is not being acquired. It is coming through voluntary donation, particularly in PMGSY, 100% for construction of 100% roads. The land is coming through voluntary donation, donation only, which <coughs> necessitates compromising on road geometrics to some extent. So we need very specific provisions for speed limit signs, traffic calming measures, because uh, we, we are compromising to some extent in some specific cases because the land is limited. Many times the lack of sight distance and visibility at intersection with main roads is also being comp compromised. Traffic calming measures and road signs can help in such situations. Lack of awareness among local communities is also a big issue, which is being tackled through awareness and education campaigns in the rural areas convincing the rural areas for a little extra land for improving geometrics. Next. For safer rural roads, these are the requirements we need to keep a record of ac accidents, geometric characteristics and standards, design and layouts of intersections, road signs and road marking provisions in the detailed project report so that they can be brought on at the time of actual construction, raised parapets or crash barriers as per the requirement, traffic coming measures for speed reduction, safety in construction zones, road safety audit. Road safety audits have been mandated now in PMGSY. Safety through maintenance of roads, because that may be non-maintenance of roads, may be major regions in rural areas for as causes of accidents. Road safety education, emergency care, embedding safety measures in detailed project reports. Now this is being emphasized. Next. In DPR preparation stage, all these things are being mandated and particularly the, the second bullet, which is brought over here, transject walk summary. This transject walk is being mandated in all PMGSY roads before the detailed project report is prepared. This leads to solution of many problems related to geometrics and safety on roads. So wherever additional drainage structures are required, safety structures are required, they can be <coughs> thought of and discussed right at the time of planning of this the roads. So transject work helps in a big way. Next. Uh, various kind of traffic control devices are required on rural roads as well, but lack of traffic control devices may lead to unsafe roads. And in majority of the cases of rural roads, it is on account of the cost of construction of rural roads. So various types of traffic control devices are being provisioned, particularly in PMGSY roads, and we are making efforts through Ministry of Rural Development so that the practices being followed under PMGSY are also 
adopted by different other rural road programs. Next. Uh, on horizontal curves, <coughs> we may need the, the horizontal curves are required in roads because of obligatory points and due to the topography of the area. Design of cars must allow drivers to negotiate them smoothly and safely. Cars should offer enough side distance so that vehicles do not run into each other or hit unexpected hazards like broken down park vehicles, pedestrians or stray animals. There is no lighting provision, so particularly during night, such uh, <coughs> hazards becomes more dangerous. Next. Now you can see a couple of uh, uh, photographs from the ground from the rural roads where the curves have been provided without adequate sight distance. Next. This is what is being provisioned, what we are mandating under PMGSY right at the time of the preparation of DPR. Various drawings are prepared where the sign will be provisioned, a speed limit sign, all kind of turning signs. They are being provisioned in the DPR so that they, they will also be put on the site. Next. Here you can see the several signs to make curves safer. This is actual photograph from one of the rural road. Next. Uh, Junction says our secretary discussed during his uh, 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 remarks that junctions are crucial elements of a road network. And we are now in a process of designing the junctions. Most of the junctions on rural roads are priority junctions. We need to decide whether to give priority to, uh, to, the, to the major roads and minor road vehicles need to stop and then, <coughs> then go. Road agency has to define the majority and accordingly the signs are to be provided. Next. These are the various types of junctions on uh, some of the rural roads. Next. In design of <coughs> the junctions, the takeoff needs to be perpendicular to higher category road. In case the angle should not be less than 70 degrees, preferably be at the flat ground because uh, gradients may uh, pose additional problems. Intersections should be designed as priority intersection and intersections should have prescribed side distances. Side distances provision in uh, rural roads is a bare minimum to avoid head on collision, particularly on cars. Next. You can see what kind of junctions are being provisioned on PMGSY roads. In, in case the junction is through a major road, this is indicating the minimum site <coughs> site distance requirement as per the IRC guidelines. Next. This is how the, the uh, trees and hedges at corners are to be trimmed so that we can have adequate site distance. Next. Uh, many, the, many rural roads are passing along the uh, water bodies. You can see the next photograph. Next, please. This is a very common situation in India, uh, either along the canal or along the water body. So adequate provisions needs to be made uh, along the side of the road to make uh, the road safer. Next. Cross drainage structures, again the alignments pass close to the water, body, water bodies and cross drainage structures are required to allow the water to pass from one side to another. So such cross drainage structures should be designed and maintained properly. Many culverts and minor bridges are not being designed in a systematic manner for uh, considering the road safety. They become hazards for either vehicles or the pedestrians. Next please. Here you can see the construction of uh, some of the cross drainage structures and how unsafe they are from some of the rural roads. Next. This is what is expected and what is being uh, provisioned in PMGSY. Wherever the, the signboards are there, then uh, we are providing the hazard marking so that even during night these are visible. Next. These are the sharp corners in habitation areas. You can see some of the rural areas, uh, some of the rural roads. 
where uh, the site distance is getting affected either because of the, the trees or because of the rural houses. Next. Uh, solders of uh, minimum 1.8 meter have been specified by Indian uh, Road Congress and wherever solders are not provided, the, the most vulnerable users, maybe cyclists or pedestrians, they occupy the space on the, the main carriageway and that leads to a lot of accidents. So wide, strong and solders labeled with pavement are required to ensure safety. Carriage bay plus shoulders should be enough for two standard trucks to pass each other even on a single lane road. So in, in most of the cases of PMGSY, we are providing 7.5 meter wide, uh, uh, 7.5 meter roadway with 3.75 meter carriage bay and uh, 1.875 meter shoulder on each side. Next please. Here you can see again the, the Requirement of shoulders is there, but they have not been properly constructed in some of the rural roads. Next. See. Next, please. Now you can see the photographs with nicely constructed shoulders and uh, appropriate uh, boards put in place. These are photographs of some of the PMGSY roads. Next, please. In habitations, it is highly likely that the alignment will pass close to schools and public buildings. Lot of vulnerable road users like school children, pedestrians and cyclists are likely to share the road carriageway with vehicular traffic and particularly where shoulders are not appropriately provided. Vehicular conflicts with vulnerable road users are not uh, safe. Next. Here you can see the schools and public buildings along the, the uh, rural roads. And uh, so appropriate measures are required uh, from safety point of view. Next, please. Trees and uh, electrical poles close to the carriage bay may be either very close to the car carriage bay or uh, on the shoulders. So there is a reluctance to cut down the trees because a lot of formalities are, are involved in getting the approvals. Uh, shifting of electrical poles also, there are a lot of uh, formalities required and uh, many times the, the executing agencies do not take much care of uh, such hazards. They do not uh, uh, shift them at appropriate uh, locations and they become real hazards on uh, such uh, rural roads. There is more risk at night if they are not well painted or marked with retro reflective paints, stickers. If they can be shifted outside the roadway width, then nothing like that. These are some of the photographs showing the examples of the trees and electrical poles. Next. These are the open drains which have been constructed under various other schemes and these open drains without adequate shoulders or without adequate safety provisions or without covers are also uh, causing becoming hazards in <coughs> safety on rural roads. Next. Uh, there are a lot of challenges because of the size of the country and a large uh, rural road network. Uh, changes in uh, social and cultural uh, levels of uh, various areas, changes in topography, weather conditions, soil and foundations. Next, please. These are some of the issues and challenges which have been already addressed. Our uh, uh, chairperson of this uh, session has already uh, addressed some of them. Uh, I would like to point out two, three important things in PMGSY3. In DPR preparation, a template has been designed which takes care of adequate provisions of the road safety and the consultants and the state uh, engineers have been asked to prepare good quality DPRs with uh, inclusion of road safety uh, signs and, and, and uh, relevant provisions. In line with Supreme Court Committee on Road Safety, DPR stage road safety ha auditing has been made mandatory for all roads with length more than five kilometer. And in order to have a cross check whether the road safety audits have been done or not, a module has been de developed on our uh, web-based monitoring and accounting system portal, 
uh, which takes care of all such audit reports to be uploaded by the concerned auditors. And after the, the, the concerned executing agency uh, complies with the observation, they will again upload the geotag photograph of the same location so that we can monitor that. Yes, the concerns of the safety have been addressed. This is one of its kind of the module in the country, which has been developed very recently for the first time to uh, keep a check on road safety audits. Next. You can skip this. Next, please. Uh, this also you can skip. I saw the photographs. Now you can see the changes which are uh, observed in rural areas, particularly on PMGSY roads. <clears throat> the signboards, the well painted hazards, if they cannot be shifted. Next. Here also you can see appropriately placed signboards, one to one comparison. Next. Uh, this is a well along one of the alignments. And here on a PMGSY road, you can see how it has been properly. Uh, the, the, the safety provisions have been made with adequate painting so that even during night uh, this this will be visible. Next, please. Again, the several signboards uh, indicating the, the end of the road over here and diversion to other side, almost a 90 degree uh, change in direction. Next. Low parapet walls. So this is a uh, wall which has been uh, parapet wall which has been raised and uh, the hazard because uh, it should not come as a hazard. So it has been properly painted. Next. Uh, this is uh, the issue of maintenance. Rain cuts like this are also uh, a danger to uh, moving vehicles. Next. Road is breaking is another danger if the road is not properly maintained. And these are the issues particularly important on rural roads because maintenance of rural roads is a very big challenge. The length being uh, uh, highest. Next, please. Uh, these are the issues which needs to be addressed and with very low cost of maintenance, the cutting of grass and uh, branches of the trees is possible. Poles needs to be shifted or hazard marking on electrical poles is to be used as a mandatory uh, temporary measure. Next, please. Age lines, if they are marked, that will be very helpful. Next, please. Uh, these are some of the factors which are very critical to enhancing road safety, particularly on rural roads. Orientation to the to needs and concerns of road users, particularly for vulnerable road users. Resources commensurate with extent of safety problems seen on roads. Coordinated approach with government, private sector, academia, research institutions. Enhancement of professional knowledge, which we are trying to do through various training programs of our uh, uh, road, safe, uh, road construction engineers. Road safety programs driven by scientific principles and evidence based research in our own video. Network with international institutions, safety engineering measures being integral part of the DPR. Now this has been made mandatory, particularly for PMGSY roads along with road safety audit. Next. One minute, please. Yes, please. Uh, this you can skip. Next. Next. Uh, these are the provisions which are now being uh, included in every DPR of uh, Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana. Next, please. These are some of the uh, speed calming measures being practiced. Speed humps, thermoplastic strips, rumble strips, textured pavements, mini roundabout and trapezoidal humps. Next, please. Uh, the, this is uh, a typical photograph of uh, using these traffic calming measures as per IRC 99. Next. These are the Rambala strips. Next, please. Next. Uh, some of the design issues in hill roads because uh, the safety on hill roads becomes particularly important and when there is no lighting, so particularly in, in, in night time. 
there are poorly designed cars a requirement of crest barriers on both the sides particularly on valley side narrow shoulders provision of vision worms on blind cars normally ignored insufficient visibility flaring at intersections normally ignored blocked visibility because of the sharp curves either vertical or horizontal poor sidewalks improper placement of road signs or signals and improper drainage next uh maintenance related issues are also uh, prominent in in hill roads potholes road er erosion shoulder drops broken crest barriers failure to remove roadway debris failure to maintain signs and signals these are very very common uh, maintenance related issues next i'll just show couple of two three photographs this is one of the uh, road uh, constructed by himachal uh, pwd and uh, you can see adequate uh, road safety measures uh, on on the valley side next this is another road with appropriate sign boards and provision of uh, uh, the the safety uh, uh, w shaped uh, device on uh, the valley side next again the the safety provisions are there on hill roads so these are again the pmgsy roads properly designed next thank you very much i hope i have done within the time thank you thank you very much dr uh, pateria yes you have done within the time but unfortunately we are running very late and uh, we won't be able to take, unfortunately, the questions um, that have now piled up in the question and answer function. <clears throat> uh, but I want to um, reassure all of you who have been asking questions that we will be answering to you uh, offline. Uh, we'll be reaching out to all the speakers uh, over the next couple of days, compile the answers and then publish the answers on the IRF website. And again, you'll be notified when those are ready. Um, the presentations as well and the recordings will be shared with you um, as soon as uh, they are ready. You'll be notified. Um, unfortunately, a few, uh, few seconds I would say left. Um, a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, um, make sure you note the date of the next uh, webinar. The fourth webinar of this series will focus on road safety management and action plan, and it will take place on the 4th of uh, May, same time as, um, as today. Um, you'll be able to, um, to register via the um, IRF, um, IRF website and check our social media handles because uh, we'll be circulating the uh, the information i would like to take a few seconds as well to well to to sum up with, with a couple of uh, of messages this meeting it seems to me clear that the business case for safer road is a very compelling one uh, we know that in low and middle income countries uh, for every dollar invested in safer roads the return on investment is 11 dollars so investing in road in safer roads make makes good business sense now it's clear from the presentations we have heard uh, this afternoon that the sector has proven that it has the tools to design and build safer roads but this must be more widely implemented so the road design the choice of the materials, the type of maintenance scenarios that we choose, they all play, play a decisive role in saving lives. So it is essential that when we plan and we design and we deliver infrastructure that we do so in this, with the safety of, all, of all the road users um, at its core and not as an extra uh, gadget. You can count on the IRF. Our, I, uh, our president is said as much at the beginning of this um, webinar. The IRF and its members stands, stand ready to support uh, and so is the entire industry. So we need to stand united for road safety, as our president said, because we united, we rise and united, we deliver. With this, I'd like to close this uh, webinar uh, with thanking, of course, all the speakers who have been um, with us this afternoon. I'd like to thank the team, the team as well, who's behind the preparation of all this webinar series. And thanks to all of you, the participants, for being with us this afternoon. Stay safe and we'll, uh, we'll be in touch with you again on the 4th of May, same time. Thank you and goodbye.